Hey y'all, hi. All right, this is it, the big one. It's time for another reckoning, which is what I call it. When I go through a bunch of products that I have either acquired specifically for the purpose of review or that brands have sent me to review, I go through them and I decide which of them, if any, I'm going to keep for myself permanently, like add to my personal makeup collection. I like to keep a pretty edited collection. I like to be able to hold all of the makeup that I consider to be be my personal makeup. I like to be able to hold it all in my makeup bind palace. I like to really know what I have, to have few enough things that I can use the products that I've kept over and over again. I get overwhelmed when I have too much stuff. Honestly, I think I'll go ahead and say if I kept everything that I review that I love, even in that case, I would have too much. I have to make some hard decisions when it comes to these reckonings. Luckily, it helps that I love donating makeup. I love giving stuff away to my family and friends. It's a very pleasurable part of my job and it makes it easier to part with things that I reviewed and loved and then decide not to keep. For me, the principle of having fewer nicer things rules overall. And it's definitely going to rule today because there are a lot of beautiful makeup products in this box. I today am kind of on a mission to keep as few of them as possible because I just went through and lightly decluttered and reorganized my vanity. I'll link that video so you can and watch it if you haven't seen it yet. And I have enough really right now. I mean, there are a couple things in here that I know that I'm gonna wanna keep, but having just done that, I'm highly motivated to choose to give away as much of this as possible. In case you can't tell, I'm a little bit daunted. There are gonna be some heartstrings pulled, maybe broken, and I'm gonna take you along for the ride. If this happens to be your first time joining my channel, then I hope you enjoy this kind of specific quirky video to start. My name is Hannah, I make videos about makeup and and fashion. And this is kind of the underlying principle, right? I love beauty and I love loving beauty. And I find that I'm the happiest when I curate my belongings. So if that sounds like it might be a good fit for you, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. Oh my gosh, I'm a little bit daunted. Actually, I'm quite daunted. I'm feeling daunted a lot lately. We just have to start. Let's start with this big hard one, okay? The Natasha Denona Tan Bronze and Glow Palette. So I reviewed this in a Natasha Denona video. It was PR. It's hard to face the music on this because it's so beautiful. And even after all these years, I still just really love Natasha Denona packaging. I've always especially loved the face palette packaging. And there's just never been a face palette that seems to be in my colors. I was hoping that this one would surprise me and it didn't. It's too orange for me. And I have tried. I've especially tried with the combination that I thought on the review day might be the thing that would work for me. So this glowy cream highlighter, the glow cream base with the glow impact powder on top of it. And it does look really pretty. It looks really, really pretty. And then I just look kind of orange overall, more orange than I would like to look. I wanted to fall in love with this, but instead, every time I use it, I just end up wishing that I had used something else instead, one of my other cream highlighters. I'm gonna give it away to somebody who is a better fit for this color palette. Whew, we're off to an absolutely rollicking start. Okay, let's keep going. The same single blusher in cloudy brown. This was from that video. I tried all the gray makeup at Yes Style in which I also ended up looking kind of orange. Here's the thing. These Yes Style blushes, actually there are a couple of them. Let me dig them all out and I can do it all together in one fell swoop. Well, there are three of them. So I liked all of them so much in that video. I particularly liked these two because they're this like pale gray and they're really finely milled, really, really pretty, really soft. And even though they are grayish, because of my coloring, they end up looking like this really natural, neutral rose. And I'm really into that. And when I reviewed them in that video, I was like, this is fantastic. And so many of you, when I talk about what I'm looking for in a blush, you're like you should try K Beauty and J Beauty. So that's all great. But here's the thing. They've been on my vanity for months since I filmed that video and I never use them because they're so matte. They're creamy to touch and the powders apply beautifully, but I just end up reaching for like a 
really wet look, glossy cream highlight, and a touch of bright pink blush to mix into it. Letting my real skin shine through and be the color that it is and just having like a glaze of product on top of it, that's kind of more what I want right now. And I just don't want to keep these around simply because the principle of the thing is that they're great. Like the colors give me something that's unique. I mean, all of that is true, but the practical reality is that if I haven't used them, either of them really since that review, I shouldn't keep them. Of course, this is largely because I have so much beautiful makeup and because I'm always testing new makeup. And so I don't want things gathering in the corners <laughs> just on principle when, even though they might be great and really interesting, they're just not what I'm using in the day to day. So I'm going to go ahead and be okay with letting these go, even though they're so cool. This one makes a little bit of, of a better case for itself. Mm, but even it, it's like with this round of stuff, here's what it is. This is really pretty. It's a really pretty color. I love how light it is, how light a wash it is. I love how it applies. I like this brand, Can Make. There is so much beautiful makeup in my life right now, stuff that I'm testing, stuff that I've had for a long time. I've been shopping my stash more aggressively lately, pulling my favorite products and keeping them on my vanity. And those have been the products that I've wanted to use. This is cool. I'm really glad that I got to review it, but I, I legitimately want to use my older makeup more than I want to use this new thing, like add a new, another other new thing. So I'm not going to keep it either. On a roll. This is an easy decision. It's a Surat foundation, the Surreal Skin Foundation. Beautiful product. And I actually find this packaging really convenient to use. It's just a more heavy duty foundation than the other Surat foundation, which I really, really like for myself. And it's in a color that's a little bit darker and yellower than what I prefer, even though it's the lightest shade. I'm going to give this away. Hmm, this is reminding me that there might be some things in this box that I feel like I need more time with. And didn't I have this in the last reckoning? And I said I felt like I needed more time with it. Well, guess what? I still need more time with it. The Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. It's this awesome gray color in the shade. It's just too dark. The principle behind keeping it, the idea is that I can use it as a mix-in for things that are too bright. I just haven't come across that situation that much, but I actually came across it recently with that new Surat concealer. One of them, is the lightest shade is like incredibly bright and white and they're sort of stiff and dry. And this is the exact opposite of that. Really, really creamy and skin-like and kind of gray and dark. So when I mixed this with the Surat, I rescued my complexion look the other day by mixing this with that Surat concealer and I was glad that I had it. I think the question is just, is that gonna happen frequently enough for me to add it to my permanent collection? I'm gonna start a rolling over to the next reckoning pile. Like it stays in the purgatory box, but I'll revisit that pile at the end and see if I can make any more decisions. Oh, this is still in its box because it is one of the two shades of the new Surat bronzer, the Artistique bronzer. Of course, I know that if one of the shades is going to work for me, it's going to be the lighter, rosier one. So I just kept this in its packaging because it means I can give it away untouched in its box. And actually, the lighter shade, I haven't used it on camera yet, so it's not even in Purgatory. It's in a different box. It's in a still need to film with this box. But needless to say, I'm not keeping this one. Charlotte Tilbury, cheek to chic. Ooh, I want to keep it so bad because it's so luxurious feeling. I feel like there are a lot of times in my life when this was a very aspirational product for me. I never dreamed. Past Hannah would be shocked to know that this came in PR. And when I first applied this in the evening at my vanity one night, I thought it was really beautiful. However, when I applied it in the light of day and when I applied it under my studio lights, I realized that Pillow Talk just isn't the best color for me. It's pretty, but I didn't love the way my cheeks looked. In a world full of blushes that make me love the way my cheeks look and that I don't have to struggle with at all and that I love to wear because I love blush. In a world full of perfect blushes, I'm not keeping one that's less than perfect. So, oof, I'm gonna give this away. I do think I would probably really like it in a different color, but Pillow Talk has a touch too much orange for me. Well, the powder, that one did. I mean, what I've learned in that video is that every Pillow Talk product is a slightly different shade. The cream blush, let's dig out something that I'm keeping. The Matte Beauty Blush Wand, even though it's in Pillow Talk, is a stunning product, and I have used this a lot since it arrived. Somehow it doesn't seem to have as much orange in it, in the shade, as other Pillow Talk things. Yeah, isn't that much more of like a muted, a muted rose? 
Maybe when it blends out, it's got a little bit more orange, but not so much that it's kept me from wanting to wear it all the time because I really, really like this formula. So yeah, I'm going to keep this. This is going straight into my collection and proving that not all pillow talks are created equal. But the powder pillow talk cheek wasn't for me. Okay, a real challenge. I'm just going to do it. I'm gonna do it and get it over with quickly. Kira Weiss, one of my favorite makeup brands. I feel so lucky to receive the occasional PR from them, particularly lucky to have received these cream blushes because I love this product. The Kira Weiss cream blush, it's like one of my favorite makeup products of all time. I was buying Kira Weiss cream blush way back before I even really got into makeup, kind of when the brand first launched, when I only had a few pieces of makeup in my life, I was buying this Kira Weiss blush as like my only blush and using it up and then buying it again. I'm hardcore about it. What I've learned, and these are the shades Inner Glow and Abundance. And if you know me, you know that these are shades that I absolutely love, especially the way that they look like on the finger, like that sort of putty color is so amazing. Two things though, one, it doesn't quite retain that putty quality when it's blended out. In fact, it almost has a little orange in it, right? Like, can you see that? I actually applied this today because I knew that this reckoning was coming and I felt like I needed to really put my feet to the fire with these products. I applied this today and my cheeks just ended up looking a little more orange than I want them to. I don't know if you can see it in this swatch right here, but the color doesn't make my heart sore as much as I hoped it would and thought that it would. And then the other thing about these two, both of them, is that an abundance is kind of the darker version, but it's the same thing, right? When you blend it out, or when I blend it out on my skin, it just goes just a tiny bit orange. If it was just that, though, I might keep one or both of them. But the other thing that I've learned is that this formula has two iterations. There's a matte version, which is not even that matte. It has a kind of luminosity to it because of the formula and because of your skin showing through. But then there's also this version that has like some shine particles in it. Both of these colors have the shine particles. And to me, a real Kira Weiss aficionado and Kira Weiss cream blush obsessed person, to me, something about the absolute exquisite, creamy, blendable perfection of the formula is a little bit compromised by those shine particles. So the shiny versions of this blush, to me, they don't have that like addictive, touchable, blendable, silky quality that I've come to associate with this blush. What I'm doing here is I'm looking for reasons not to keep these, and those are my reasons. I prefer the matte version of this formula, and I don't love wearing these colors as much as I thought that I would. I think that those are really good reasons, but this is a hard one for me because this is the kind of thing that I really love to own. However, it's not going to break my heart. I think it's the right decision. I have so much beautiful blush, and there are blushes in here, even the pillow talk, the one that I just kept, but there are also other blushes in here that I'm going to be unequivocally excited to keep, so I'm letting these go. Okay. I have to admit there's some complexion products in here that I haven't spent enough time with yet. I am not going to try to stress myself out. I just am going to face the music. I've been testing a lot of complexion lately and that's been great. I actually really enjoy it. And these are all things I've tested lately and I've liked all of them for different reasons. I don't necessarily want to keep them all though, but each one of them, it's like I used it a lot around the time I was testing it and I liked it. Like I gave each one the Ritual Defeat Three Drops Lightless Serum Foundation, the NARS, whatever it is, Light Reflecting Foundation, and the Surat Beauty Dew Drop Foundation, I gave each one of these a good review because each one is a good product for kind of different reasons, but each one is a good product. So given that that's the case, right, I know that I like them, but I also don't think I want to keep all of them because I don't want to own as much complexion product as that would be this on top of what I already have. I need to really make a thoughtful decision and I haven't had enough time because it's like as soon as I finished testing the NARS one, the Ritual Defeat one came. As soon as I finished testing that, this one came. I just don't know. They're going back into purgatory. And I'm gonna have to put my mind to that project in the coming weeks. Mm, another absolute smash hit from Charlotte Tilbury. That review was a mixed bag, but this product really, really stood out. The Push Up Lashes Mascara in the shade Pillow Talk. Look at that color. Of course, I'll link that review so you can see this on my lashes. Look at that color. It's like my dream mascara color that I didn't know I wanted. A sort of soft burgundy brown. I love it. 
so much. And I'm definitely keeping it. I mean, like, this currently has, like, if I lost it, I would buy it with my own money status. Probably my favorite thing that we've seen in the video so far. Ah, here's another thing that I think I might keep. It's easier for me to decide to keep a primer because I know that I'll use it up. With something like, you know, a cream blush or powder blush, it's like, given what I do for work and given the current state of my makeup collection, I'm not going to use up this powder blush. It's just going to sit around waiting to be used, not getting a lot of use until one day I decide to declutter it. But a primer, it's like, even if I go a month or two without using it, preferring other primers, eventually I will use it up because I only have maybe three, four actual primers or priming products right now, and I use one every day, and I use like a whole pump or two. So it doesn't threaten the balance of things, it doesn't threaten the ecosystem as much as, as makeup does. But the other thing about this one is that it gives a very matte finish, and I just decluttered the almost empty dregs of my e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, which was my most mattifying primer. I still have the EXO one, which is sort of like a satin finish. They don't actually really have a quite matte primer right now, so I'm excited to incorporate this one. It's the Surratt Perfectionist Primer. Sorry, I don't think I said the name out loud. I reviewed this in my Surratt makeup review, which uh, I will also link. Okay, this is one that I set aside time to test in advance of this video so that I could make a really informed decision. It's Skyline Pink, the Revlon Lipstick. This is from one of my drugstore makeup reviews. I think it was just looking for intriguing drugstore makeup. I like this kind of blanked out lip, like slightly icy blanked out lip. And I felt like I could have gone either way when I first applied it in that video. I kind of liked something about it, but I just wasn't sure. So I tried to use it a couple times over this past week and I just never really loved the way that my lips looked. I ended up wiping it off and applying Auric Plush Ritual in the shade Haze, like literally every day that I tried to wear it. And that told me all that I needed to know. I'm not gonna keep it. I'm also not going to keep this Gen Z Arch Support. They sent this to me and it's just in the lighter color than what I usually wear. I love this product though. So I tried to make it work. I tried it a couple of times. It is a fiber building brow pomade. So great for fluffed up natural full brows. Just this one is in the shade light taupe and I prefer dark brown. I prefer like an ashy deep color for brows. I just ended up looking a little weird every time I tried to wear it. Mmm, the Surratt Mascara, with which I have kind of an uneven relationship, as you'll know if you saw that re that review. The TLDR for this mascara is, it's great if you just want to tint your lashes, like just a wash, single layer. And when I want a really light lash look, it's great for that. What I actually didn't say in that review is that it's particularly great for that because it's very sturdy. It doesn't smudge. It's not exactly waterproof. Like, I don't have to struggle to get it off at the end of the day, but I find that if I accidentally forget and like rub my eyes when I have it on, it doesn't disturb it, which is really nice. But I don't like the results when I try to build this, make it more dramatic. If I want a dramatic eyelash look, I'll go to another mascara. The thing about mascaras is I can't give them away because you're not supposed to share mascara. So once I've tested one, my choices are to either keep it and keep using it or to dispose of it. In this case, I definitely like it well enough to keep it and keep using it. I'm just going to try to remember not to try to build it. Oh my gosh, there's so much Syrah. <laughs> there's so much Syrah in here. I'm not going to talk too long about these because it's super easy. These are my two favorite products from that Surratt review. The Artistique Blush in Barb a Papa and the Rose Diamante Torch Lumiere. See the Surratt Beauty review video to find out why I love these and watch me applying them to my face. Needless to say, they currently have couldn't pry them from my cold dead hands status. I would actually rather declutter like stuff that I already own to make room in my collection for these if it really came to that than not keep them. So this is like, yeah, super easy. Love, 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 love. I feel like all the stuff I want to keep has like sunk to the bottom. So I started out with this false sense that I was barely keeping anything and that I was doing amazing. And now I'm peering into the bucket and it's like the going is getting tougher. Well, actually, 
Mm, this is hard too because these are such cool iconic products the Surratt lid lacquers I ended up liking them way more than I thought that I would I think that they are sturdier than I expected them to be oh gosh I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it because the colors what I was gonna say is but how practical is it to keep them in spite of all that's good about them when am I gonna use them instead of say Tom Ford naked bronze or something or even the Surratt batons the smoky eye batons is one of them in here yeah the Surratt Smoky Eye Baton, which is like my favorite product from that entire review. Like, when am I going to use this instead of this? That's what I was going to say. Though That was going to be my reason for not keeping them. Maybe I just haven't given them enough of a chance. I think I'm going to put them back in purgatory because I would love it if I could really fall in love with one and then be like wearing lid lacquer all the time. I'd be into that. I would love that journey for myself. I just know if it's realistic. So I'm going to give them a little more time. Mm, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Keeping the Smoky Eye Baton in Cendre. Again, see the Surratt review for a full description of why it's great. And I actually already have this in the dark brown, but Surratt sent it to me in the dark brown. It's a double, so I'm not gonna keep the new one of the dark brown because the one that I have, even though it's like a year or two old that I got from Violet Gray for that review, it's still going strong. And I, you know, I much prefer this color, the new color. I'm gonna give this away. I'm also going to keep <laughs> I'm also going to keep both of the Surratt lip what are they called lip sleek the colors are just so good heaven and the formula I mean the formula is great and new de soleil look at this it's the kind of thing I love to wear on my lips. And again, the feeling that I have about this is like, I would rather, I'm not gonna do this because I don't, it's not this extreme, you know? But if it came to it, I would rather replace something that's in my current lipstick collection with these than not keep them. Like I can think of things that I would happily allow these to kick out of my collection. So I feel no compunction about keeping them. I, I, know, I know that I really want to keep wearing them. Aha, but Charlotte Tilbury lip talk, pillow cheek, air blur brushed stuff on the other hand it can go i i like the lip cheat and pillow talk but not more than other lip liners that i have because again the color is not my favorite i didn't really like the formula or the color of the air brush so this is like the charlotte hilbury's new release yeah i'm gonna give both of these away and you know, even though I liked it better than them, better than the two products that I just decided not to keep, I'm also not going to keep this. It's like a pigmented lip lacquer. It's a very impressive product, and I might be tempted to keep it because it's looked so pretty on, and actually there have been times when I've been wearing this in a video and people have been like, oh my gosh, what's on your lips? Like, it's gone well. If I didn't have so much makeup, and if I hadn't just kept the Surratt Lip Sleek in Heaven, which is basically, uh, for me, like a much more elevated version of the same thing, in a similar color that's even slightly better for me. If I hadn't just done that, I might be tempted to keep this. But in light of that, I think I can give it away. All right, I'm feeling re-empowered and we're kind of getting down to the bottom. This is kind of an interesting situation. So this is from my About Face beauty review all that time ago. It's an eyeshadow stick, and I just have not felt compelled to use it. Like, I didn't even know it was around. But this, the color chameleon from Charlotte Tilbury, I have felt compelled to use. But the weird thing is, I much prefer the color of the About Face one. I think the reason I've been compelled to use a Charlotte Tilbury one is just because it's been front and center because this Charlotte Tilbury stuff is kind of new to me. So I've been kind of fascinated by it, trying to make it work, trying to understand what it's designed for. And I've really liked the eye looks that I've ended up adding this to. It's like I've grabbed it and added it to looks and it sort of lit up my lower lash line. But traditionally, I don't really get along with light rose or like copper. I mean, it's really like a light copper, that color. With eyeshadow sticks that color, both of these are a little light for me, honestly, to be a liner of any kind or a shadow stick of any kind. Here's what I think. I think that the About Face Beauty one, the fact that I haven't really used it is showing me that even though I have been reaching for this Charlotte Tilbury one to test it and kind of having fun with it, the fact that I have forgotten about this one since its video is showing me that that's the eventual destiny of the Charlotte Tilbury one too. I think if this Charlotte Tilbury product were in a darker color, even darker than 
the about face, I would definitely keep it because I like how shiny it is and I really like the formula. But both of these kind of fall into that category of like a type of makeup that I don't actually end up using over and over again or finding that gratifying to use. I am gonna give both of them away. Okay, there's not a lot left. We can do this. Ah, okay, this one I think needs to stay in purgatory. It's the Surat Duo. It's like a bronzer and highlighter duo. I like the Surat powder products. I don't know how into powder, like keeping powder products I am right now, but I feel like the reason I need to keep this is to compare it to the full-size new bronzer that just released. I don't really know how similar this is to that. If I want to keep either one of them, which one's it going to be? I don't know. And I don't have that other one down here. Need more data on this. The Sigma Cream Blush, unexpectedly glorious. And actually, I haven't been using it as much as I would want to be using it because it's been sort of at the bottom of this pile in the purgatory box. This is in the shade Corderosa. I love the way that it applies to the skin. It just like blends in. It's a little bit, under the lights, it always looks a little bit more orange than I feel like it looks when I use it. But seeing it that way makes me feel like the jury maybe should still be out a little bit. I think I need to learn more whether I really love this color or if I'm just so seduced by the formula because the formula is really, really good. I'm going to keep it in purgatory, but since there will be way fewer things in purgatory going forward, I'll be able to focus my energies on making a decision about it. Oh my gosh, I think I might be wanting to keep everything that's left. How embarrassing. What an embarrassing note to go out on. Is that really the case? Do I need all of these? Do I need to keep all of them? You know what? Here's the thing. I haven't really tested this, tested it, tested it. I applied it in that video. I loved it. I love the packaging and the colors and the fact of it. Like I just want to want to keep it. But I think it's fair for me to say that it could stay in purgatory because there might be a lot that I don't really know yet about this eyeshadow formula. And I think if I were to keep it now, I it would be hasty. I would be making assumptions just based on like the covetousness of it. It's the instant eye palette from Charlotte Tilbury's Smoky Eyes Are Forever. Yeah, I just haven't had it for that long. And I've only really used it twice. Like I've only really built a full eye look with it twice. So yeah, it can stay in purgatory. That makes me feel a little bit better. I maybe could say the same about this Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize in Champagne, but I have worn it more times than the palette. No, you know what? This is staying in purgatory too. I, again, haven't had it for that long. It could still prove to be unworthy. I'm just excited about it because it's pretty new. I'm gonna keep testing it. However, I do think that it's time for the Juvia's Place Coffee Shop Gloss in Brown Sugar to join the ranks. This is another one that blows me away every time I apply it. Like the color is just so great. I almost feel like there's a touch of green in the brown and that's why it works so well for me. The formula is also really great. This came from that video, Desperately Searching for Interesting Drugstore Lip Products. It was like one of the the top two, I think. I'd like it to start living in my actual lipstick and lip gloss drawer. And you know, if it doesn't go as far as I think it will for me, I will declutter it down the line, but I, I think you can go ahead and make a decision. Same with BK Beauty Grace. This is a new color in the amazing BK Beauty lipstick formula. Kind of reminds me of Pillow Talk actually, but I don't find that I feel like it looks orange when I wear it. I think it just has a touch more neutrality, like a touch of gray that Pillow Talk doesn't have. Maybe more like the Pillow Talk matte blush wand than those Pillow Talk lip products. Let's see. Yeah, just as I suspected. So that's the air blur whatever. And you can just see it's like much brighter. It doesn't have that nudity that BK Beauty Grace has. That is what makes me like it so much. I also really like the formula, as I was saying. It's just, it's thin, super thin on the lips, but it doesn't feel like it's going to slide right off or wear right off. It's a cool product. And then lastly, another thing that I put on today, because I was like, I really need to be able to make a decision about this. I wanted to be able to declutter it because it doesn't seem practical. It's the Unearthly Cosmetics Low Light Highlighter Single. It doesn't seem practical for me because what it is is basically the highlight version of Natasha Denona Sparks from the Gold Palette. Remember that really sheer, a clear, not even sheer, but a totally clear base with a suspension of silver micas in it that just makes anything look super, super 
super wet. I loved that eyeshadow for that quality. This does work on the eyes, but it is a highlighter. <laughs> like these days, I'm actually more excited to have something that does that on the cheeks. Of course, you have to be okay with a little bit of micro shimmer showing up close, right? Up close, you can see the little particles. But from a very short distance away, it just looks very wet. Like my cheeks just look really, really wet. And it's a nice thing. It's a nice alternative to a cream highlight to be able to brush something like this on with a brush on top of something else because it goes on top of anything, cream, powder, anything, and give my cheeks that like drenched quality. I think that I'm going to find it unexpectedly useful. So at least for now, I'm going to keep it. Oh my gosh, I, I, I didn't do as well as I was hoping. Let's look at the stats. Okay, so these are the products that are going back into purgatory. They're staying in the purgatory box. And I was hoping that here at the end, I might be able to make some last minute decisions about some of them, but no. I mean, I think I've just got decision fatigue, but glancing over them, I'm like, yeah, I need more time with all of these. These are the things I'm not keeping from the purgatory box. There are only 17 of them. I kind of thought it would be more. I had the sense going into this that it was gonna be like the vast majority, but let's see what I am keeping. Okay, so 12, there's 12, there's 12 things here that I'm keeping. It's Surratt. Surratt really got me in this purgatory box round. I feel really confident about all of these and it doesn't feel like masses of makeup. Right? It doesn't feel like too, too, too much. The two mascaras, you know, I'll go through them sometime in the next three to five months. The primer as well. So the things that are gonna be like more permanent or they're gonna last and last, there are actually only nine of them. So that makes it a little bit more stomachable. Usually at this moment, I look over the things I've decided to keep and I'm like, actually, I don't need X. Actually, I don't need Y. But I don't feel like that in this purgatory box round. I actually feel like, no, I, I genuinely want to add these 12 products to my collection, each for its own valid reason. I'm gonna give away these 17. And the ones that have lived to fight another day, gosh, they're all in peril now because I feel like I kept so much this time around. At least it wasn't the majority. And I'm also glad that I don't feel torn, right? I feel really pleased with all of my decisions. And I hope that you enjoyed the video. I feel like it ended up being more dramatic than I expected it to be. But you know, if nothing else, packed with information about these products and how their presences in my life have kind of played out after the review period. As always, thank you for being here. As always, I hope you are subscribed or will subscribe. And as always, I hope you're taking extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.